Josh, the baddest motherfucker on the planet is Max Holloway right now. He's a featherweight fighter. And we always talk about the bantam weights, the featherweights, the lightweights. Those are the premier weight categories where you have just an abundance of talent. With Aljamain Sterling coming into the featherweights and Max having the performance that he had, how is it that you look and say, what is it if you were in charge of the UFC, which we know you never will be, <laughs> but neither will I. <laughs> and if you had the opportunity to match things up here, what is it that you would do? And, and where do you think the UFC is going to put Max Holloway next? I think they're going to have him fight Ilya Teporia, and I think there's a good chance that he fights Teporia in Spain. I think that's a great... I would love to see that. I think I would love to see that. Maybe in a soccer arena. I don't know. In a big stadium there. I think it's well-deserved. I think the the fans there in Spain want it. And I think Max is crazy enough to go to someone else's stomping grounds and go ahead and have that fight. He's a dog, man. Like, let's be honest, man. Anyone that points to the center of the kid and says, let's throw down after you've won four rounds, come on. Let's go. I'm, I'm, I'm me, all on board for that you. fight. Look, Dana White went off on a reporter who asked about Hawaii. He actually went off on, uh, what did he call it? PFL Pelator. Pelator. PFLator. And he's, you know, but the real thing is, is about the question of Hawaii. Shouldn't the UFC take a show to Hawaii and have Max Holloway as the main event on that show? Let me explain. Do you know? I know you know why, but let me explain to people at home why they don't do it. (laughs) Because there is a truck there for the TV networks, okay, that's been left there since World War II. Okay. That truck is a fucking (laughs) dinosaur. And that's why they don't do the Pro Bowl over there anymore because they can't operate their TV networks anymore because the software and all the other shit that's in there is fucking dead. The cables and the wires and everything there. It's when we did our shows there for Bellator, it was. Difficult to get ear communication to the truck back and forth. It, Literally, they were sending messengers from the truck in. Okay, you guys go live in about, let's do the camp things. down. Five, yeah. four, three. They were counting down in the hallway so we could yeah. see them. They always had to put the desk near the back exit door so we could see to the truck. So the director could run out and go, okay, you guys ready? Go. That's how old that damn truck is. I mean, <laughs> that's that's a big deal when it comes to production value. Also, they don't have a big enough stadium. Sure, they've got the... Well, the, the problem is they don't have a big enough indoor stadium. That's what I'm saying. Okay, that's what I meant. Yeah, you got to let okay. me get to that. <laughs> it's like, okay. no. Sorry. But I mean, look, I they've talked about doing them at the football stadium. You just can't... But they're worried about you rain. You're worried about rain when you're in Hawaii. Every 10 minutes, the weather yeah. will change. So you got to be you yeah. got to be worried about that. And then also, too, you don't want it to be too hot. You don't want the sun to hit you. Look, remember, you're sitting at the equator. That sun hits a little bit different. Okay, and it, I mean, be honest, the first time I, I never got sunburned, the first time ever in my life got sunburned was in Hawaii. Spent, you know, four or five hours out on surfboard, thought I was God, realized I wasn't. I thought I was, at the end of the <laughs> day, I was like Satan, Quickly. I was burnt to shit. <laughs> it was so bad, John. Oh, man. <laughs> but look, Max Holloway versus Ilya Teporia is the fight that I want to see. But can I throw one, up, one more out there that I really, really want to see? That's it. I want to see Aljo and Evelov. Oh, that's a good uh, one. I, I, I personally, I would like to see Aljo and Mr. Ortega. Ooh, see, okay, okay. You jumped me. You jumped me there. I did just a little bit, but I think that's a great matchup. I just think I look with Aljo, and people are not super, like, they're impressed with Evelov, and he's undefeated, but they, I think the two of them would end up having to cancel each other a little bit in terms of the grappling and the wrestling. And where would where would Aljo be? Would he be able to stuff the wrestling of Evelov? And would he be the one on bottom now instead of the instead of the one on top grinding on somebody? Like how would this work out? And would he know. be able to? And when he did get Evelov down, would would Evelov have the answers of him being on his back? How would he get back up? Would they end up standing? Would it, would they cancel each other out? And we'd end up seeing a really horrible stand up fight. Would it end up being that? But I love the Ortega situation. I don't. I guess where I look at it with the Sterling and Ortega thing, though, is that Sterling hasn't quite developed on the level with his stand-up just yet, whereas Brian Ortega is a fucking animal on the feet. You know, yeah. he, he's a dog, man. Like he's. But you, you look at it, and you, I would right now say Brian Ortega has the advantage on the feet. You know, and uh, But 
wrestling wise, Aljamain's got the advantage. And when it comes to submission, they're both great. Different styles. Absolutely. Different styles. You know, absolutely different styles, but they're both great. They do they approach it differently, they do it differently. But it would be so cool if you could see those guys getting into you know scrambles on the ground you talk about two ferrets going after it man it would be just incredible to watch i would agree uh would we ever see giga and yair i don't know i'd like to see yeah. that i would like to see it too cuz I, I don't think yeah. that yair would try to take him down i think he'd try to keep it on the feet i think giga would be willing to oblige like hey giga is absolutely willing to keep <laughs> yeah. anything on the feet so that would be a fun fight as well this whole this whole um weight class i mean is it's stacked from top to bottom but i look at i look at aljo aljo is somebody that didn't get a lot of respect at 135 you know and now he's at 45 and he, he basically is getting shit on for his performance uh at ufc 300 and i'm i'm just here to say like i know that I gave him a hard time over the the Peter Yan and the in the in that fight, his first fight. But man, this dude's good. I never yeah. in there ever am I am never said in any show never that he's not good. This kid's talented. He's got skills. He can wrestle. He's smart. He can grapple. He's fighting smart. He understands what yeah. he's good at. He's not getting away from it. And from us as 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 analysts or commentary or whatever. And I think as fans, you guys we shouldn't be bashing on people for fucking getting wins. I mean, if you don't like it, then don't watch it. But look, the dude can fight. The guy knows yeah, he what can. he can do, and he can and he does it very damn well. So I'll, um, I look at him and Evaloff, and I look at him. I like the T City fight too because I do agree with you. There was, he will be able to there take was, Brian down. There was a question that came up about uh, Aljo that he, Aljo was the only guy being a former that did not get an interview. Oh, we got to talk about that. Like, people were talking about that, and it's like. It's not what you people, it's not what you people no. are thinking. Okay. That is a matter of time. Everything on that show is on a format sheet mm -hmm. because everything is based upon, you know, each fight is played out like it's going to go the distance. And then when it doesn't, now they have time for the interviews and things like that that go on. And when you get closer to that last preliminary fight pay-per-view barrier, time becomes very difficult to manage. And when Aljo's fight went the distance, that's why they didn't do the interview. But I can understand why people were trying to make something up. Well, I'm, it, look, it I'm, I'm looking, let me go, against let me go by the fight card. So Divison Figueredo, Cody gets finished in the, in the second round. Second. Then you got Bobby Green and Jim Miller goes the distance. Then you got yep. Jessica Andrade and Marina goes the distance. Then you got Jalen Turner and Moy Connell, which is a finish. Close. But in, it's finished but in the close. second round. Okay, then you go to the, the prelims. And look, when people, when the producer, they, normally the executive producer and the producer, they write out the format for the show and they walk you through like, hey, we have this much time. This happens at, you know, one minute into the show. This happens at two minutes in the show. This ha they, you have 35 seconds to talk about exactly. this. Exactly. That's exactly. They, they time it they out. Jam it, he's jamming it out for every 30 seconds, every 10 seconds to the T. So they have it all scheduled out. Diego Lopes gets a first round finish. Great job by him. Holly Holmes second round finish uh, over. A See, that's what. But but look, now they're filling. Yep. Because when when you have Diego Lopez get that finish, now they're filling time instead of bringing fighters out. They're filling time to try to balance their schedule back out. They'll call it being light and being heavy, and they're now filling with you know specials about you know the different fighters that are on the main card and things like that. And now it gets close to where they're back on schedule. And now comes the next. And fight. let me, let me um, explain this to you as well. You're like, well, why don't they just go to the next fight? Well, because what happens is if the fights all end up finishing fast, then you end up with a 40 minute gap until the main card starts. So they are pacing. And, and this is what makes Bellator did a great job of this. And UFC has always done a pretty damn good job of this is the pacing of the show. No, they do. A great is to make sure that like you're not stuck with that 20, 30 minute gap between the main card and, and the uh, prelims. And then on top of it, that you're not spending, you know, 20, 30 minutes in between each or 15, 10, 15 minutes in between each fight. Like that, that gets yeah. people where, to tune you out as well. And, and where you'll see the UFC end up having that problem is when they have a fight that is scheduled and the fighter in the back, they're in the back, but all of a sudden they're sick and they cancel the fight. Now you see the UFC doing the, okay, they're filling, and that's when they'll have 
you know, their commentators, be it Bisping and DC or Paul Felder, they start talking about fights and it's mm-hmm. a lot of talk and stuff. It's because they're filling, you know, they've, they're filling that gap. They can't just bring the next fight yeah. out because it's scheduled somewhere on that format. You'll also hear sometimes they'll be filling to the point where like, so we had this do this in Chicago. This actually held up our show was you need to have two ambulances <laughs> on site. You need to have one to take a fighter and one to be there. You cannot have Either. a fight without an ambulance there. Because if the fight goes on and someone gets hurt and there's no ambulance, so then that is that's a cardinal rule. Like you will you will lose your promoter's license if something like that happens. Yeah. So uh, those are things to kind of keep in mind. But look, there's a little clip I wanted to play, um, John. I'm going to play this over the thing. I was watching uh, Chad Ochocinco. He got into it with Shannon Sharp over Max he has Holloway. Lost his mind. He has lost. His he has lost his mind. damn mind. And I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> Uh, oh. I think Max responded to him. What do you think would happen if, if Max Holloway had to fight me? Man, look here. <laughs> Boxers don't do well in, in the UFC. That's why that's why UFC fighters have to go to the boxing ring. Ain't no boxer right. gonna do nothing with no guy in the UFC. It's gonna be all the matter. So I'm let me, okay. Let me let me let me ask yeah. you a question. Now. I can't stop let me ask you a question because I was let me ask state you a question. wrestling champ in '82. Okay, you know you see <laughs> the hands though. I got hands. So at what point do you think Max Holloway would beat me if we were to get an octagon? Like round one, two, or three? 30 seconds. No, no, listen. <laughs> Wait, what you mean 30 seconds? What you mean? <laughs> why are you, why are you, I'm why putting are you all, disrespecting me? I'm putting me? all my money. I'm taking all the money I got, everything I own, and putting it on Max Holloway. So you think, you think, you think, you think Max Holloway can beat me? <laughs> beat the brakes off you. And two more people are just like you. You know what, oh, Max shit. Holloway? If you see this, if you have any time, if you have any time doing your break until your next fight, please let's spar. Let's get some footage. I just want to show Uncle 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 Sharp that Uncle Sharp. I ain't with the bullshit. Please, Ocho. brother Max Holloway. Ocho. Congratulations, but it, please, Ocho. there's le- what every sport there's levels, and I and right. I, I, I know it. you you he's the, he's you, the, he's you, the best of the best. Good I know. Entry, I know. Good entry level. Good entry level. <laughs> entry. <laughs> but to go to that top entry. entry <laughs> yes. Man, I thump Max Holloway chin. Man, don't look <laughs> at me like that. Dude, like, this city, guy's man. got what some. About, uh, Yo. Built for that. Uh, I mean, you know, you go back to. Uh, <laughs> look at him shadow boxing. <laughs> That was a great fit. Oh, geez, that's it, man. But this, this is this is this is when, and and this happens with athletes all crazy. the time. You become delusional oh. in the fact that hey, because you were a professional athlete, you can go with another professional athlete in their sport, Josh. Oh, so I watched Chad. I watched Chad Ocho Cinco or Chad Johnson, however you want to say yeah. it. You know, in his boxing debut, do you remember? Do you remember no, that? No, I don't. Because he did it on the Logan Paul uh, Floyd Mayweather card. Oh, he did. I didn't see that. He actually, he actually had, you know, and he got he got stung in it. But you know, he he, I think it ended up being a draw. But it's like, dude, you, you're basic mm-hmm. beginner level. You know, and it's like you have no concept of how good people are, and especially when they can kick you. And you, I mean, he hasn't even. He's never dealt with knees. He's never dealt with kicks. He's never done. You just look and you go, you have no idea. But I do appreciate the fact that he was a wrestling champion in 1982. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought that was great because uh, Max even chirped back. Yo, bro, anytime you want, man, we can go ahead and get it. You can go in and yep. come on in. I'm here available yep. for you anytime. I thought That's it was it. great, man. I thought it was absolutely great. It is. But yeah, I thought Shannon Sharp was fantastic in it. You know? Oh yeah, he's grip. He, oh. he was just being real. He was just being real he the whole time. Beat the brakes off you. <laughs> the yeah, Thirty it. seconds. Thirty seconds. Shit. Yeah, he's I'm like, like what, 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 yeah. what, you, what you mean thirty seconds? <laughs> what? That's a, he would tap hey. you, submit you, knock you out, whatever in thirty yeah, seconds. Yeah. People, you have no concept. It's so funny. There used to be uh, this like uh, this like uh, reporter that used to go to gym to gym, and he would want to grapple with uh, fighters. And he would video it on how long it would take. Dave, you know this guy, right? This guy, <laughs> Dave knows this guy. No. This is how I met Dave. This dude thought he could come to my gym. Oh, oh and he yeah, could. Tra- oh, yeah, and he's yeah, like, yeah. yeah. He's like, oh, I've, I've, I've grappled with you know Uriah. I've grappled with so and so. Grappled with you. And 
it took him like two minutes, bro. I tapped this dude in like less than 30 seconds. I was like, come on, man. I had a hill hook on him and I was like, he was getting ready to let it pop. I, I let it go. He's like, oh no, keep going. I wasn't going to tap. I was like, all right. So another 10 sure, seconds right. went by and I tapped him. I was like, all right, dude. Okay. It's got to go. <laughs> God, come on, kid. Come on. That's classic. It was classic. Yep. That's an old That's school classic. footage video. That Pe- people are, uh, sometimes people are incredibly delusional. And what they think they can do compared to what they really absolutely. Do. All right, look at the we're going back to the one forty five pound division. Let's talk about Let's our go. main picks. Okay, our main picks is obviously going to be Max Holloway versus Taporia, and then we both yep. like the Aljamain Sterling versus either Evolve or Brian Ortega. Like, and both. I like Yair Rodriguez uh, back down to the Giga Chikadze. I want to see that fight. Look, y- Yair's fought twice for the title, came up short twice, two, three times, three times, three times. I think he fought three times for the title. Yair did, right? Two or th- it was two times for sure. No. No, no. Well, he won the interim title. That's right. And then lost to Alex. Yes. Okay. That, that's the two Oh, times. that's right. I keep thinking the Max fight was the... Um, I keep thinking no. the Max fight was a title shot. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so look. He ends up losing. <clears throat> I like to see the Giga Chadze and Yair Rodriguez fight. That'd be a fantastic fight. Let's let that fight happen. Let's go ahead and let that one cook. But uh, those are those your selections as well in that 145 pound division. Give me another one, John. Give all, me one more. All give me one more. Okay, I'm going to give you the the one that I think is uh, one of the funnest ones there could be. And if you want to make it uh, on in September at the Sphere because it is, you know, the uh, what is it Mexican International Day yeah. or week or whatever. I'm taking Diego Lopez against Yair Rodriguez. Ooh, that's a big step up in competition for the young man. No, it's not. He's that good. No, he is that good. That I good. agree with you. He's that good. And I also I also think he's extremely big for the weight. And yeah. hearing, hearing the commentary last week saying that how big he was for the weight. Or or give me a rematch with Evelov. I'll take that one, too. Yeah, that might be a good idea. That might be good. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing him go against Arnold Allen either. Because the two of them Another can get after you. Arnold's coming off of a loss. Two. Yeah. So let's maybe let let's let him rest a little bit. Get him get him a win, man. He deserves to get a win. Yeah. So uh, but yeah, I definitely want to see uh Diego um, you know, I would like to see Diego next month on uh Independence Day, Mexican Independence Day. <laughs> I'll stick with the bio. Uh and then again in September. Let's do it. Let's let there it go. go.